modern day graphics cards are capable of so much more than just playing the latest AAA games at high resolution and frame rates. If you're a 3D artist or animator, video producer, or someone conducting scientific research, high performance graphics cards are critical. After all, if you're working in something like Maya and the performance preview window is just updating at a snail's pace, it doesn't exactly make for a smooth experience and certainly not a fun one. So even if you're a hobbyist then, having the best GPU that you can afford to plonk into your system is critical. Of course, for the professionals there are cards such as Quadro, but what if you're a gamer as well? It's very tempting to look at Pascal and perhaps buy a cheap GTX 1080 Ti, but is that really the best route to go if you are also a professional? Well, in this Red Gaming Center.com video, we're going to be investigating just that very thing. There are a couple of things, however, we need to take into consideration before we look at the benchmarks. First is the Octane Bench by Otoe has not been updated yet to the latest version of the renderer. That means that what I've had to do is download the Octane renderer uh, as a trial version, copy the files over from that to the benchmarking application and run it that way. Otherwise the software will tell us in no uncertain terms that Turing is unsupported. So I've run these tests with this particular method across all four cards here. The second caveat is while some studios and software have been updated and are being updated to fully take advantage of Turing's ray tracing cores as well as, well as tensor cores, other software has not been. So it's very possible that in the future Turing's performance will continue to evolve. For example, V-Ray is being currently updated to really take advantage of the ray tracing ability of Turing. And this is probably something that's going to continue to evolve and new features added. It's not to say that, of course, you can't do these things on Pascal, but performance most likely will be incredibly limited in comparison. We have two particular RTX 20 series cards here we're going to be testing. The first is an MSI Gaming Z, which is a RTX 2070 card that's on loan to us. We're also doing a full review of the gaming performance of it. I've done all the benchmarks and putting the video together as we speak. And the second is a Gigabyte GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. The MSI model has been loaned to us for the purposes of review, but it's going back. The Gigabyte model, meanwhile, is ours. We have purchased it with our own money. These results are also available in an article which you can find, of course, in the description of this very video. With all of that said, let's take a look at the results. So then, the results are clear. Luxmark, Specview Perf, and V-Ray, just for example, put out drastically improved performance with Turing compared to the Pascal architecture. Now, does that mean that if you have, for example, a GTX 1080 Ti, that you should go ahead and upgrade to a 2080 Ti? Well, honestly, that depends on you. If you are very happy with the gaming performance of the 1080 Ti, let's say you're running 1440p monitor, 
where the GTX 1080 is more than capable, let alone the 1080 Ti, then you might be okay if you are only doing 3D rendering, for example, as a hobby. But with that said, if you are running your own business, if time is money, then you may be better off to upgrade to a GeForce 20 series of cards, because it's fairly obvious that Turing is considerably faster than Pascal for production level work. For scientific research and 3D modeling, Turing is definitely faster. Of course, there are other options such as Titan V and Quadro, but I'm going to be leaving those out of this video, simply because, well, this video is also aimed at gamers, people who want that card to be serving dual purposes. You could of course also go with a Vega based GPU, but since Vega 56 and 64 aren't as fast in gaming as let's say a GTX 1080 Ti, well there is that to also take into account. If you have around 500 US dollars to spend on a GPU, you are probably much better off buying an RTX 2070 based card if you also want to do production level work. Sure, the GTX 1080 can be cheaper, and particularly if you go with the used market, but once again, it does depend on your usage scenario. If gaming is your primary purpose and you just do a little bit of 3D modeling here or there, then it probably doesn't matter. Taking the RTX 2070 card, which is priced very similarly right now, if you were to look on Amazon compared to, let's say, a GTX 1080. In terms of game performance, the RTX 2070 is a little faster than the GTX 1080, but if you get a really good deal on a GTX 1080, it might not be worth it to you. But if you are someone who does work regularly during the day on, let's say, 3D modeling or what have you, and therefore you would definitely benefit from the performance Turing brings, then the RTX 2070 is more of a no-brainer. There are also other things we need to take into consideration. I did mention earlier in this video that we've recently tested DLSS, and I'll link that video in the description of this one. But the long and short of it is that 4K DLSS is very impressive visually. It's almost indistinguishable from native 4K, but at a drastically reduced performance impact. That's definitely something to take into consideration if you are spending around 500 US dollars. It means that cards such as the RTX 2070 and 2080 could, at least if our uh, DLSS continues to take off, could be very capable of running those type of titles at 4K-like resolutions. Folks who already have a GTX 1080 Ti though, and you're debating whether to upgrade to a 2080 Ti, it really does come down to A, your budget, and B, whether you feel you would benefit from the additional performance of Turing. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you have, well, you know what to do. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can also find us on Patreon, which is, of course, linked in the video description, along with Amazon affiliate links. If you do fancy buying a new GPU, or hey, even a toaster, then if you use one of those links, it does provide us a few pennies. So do consider if you want to help support the channel. With all of that said, I wish you a very good day. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.